The expression animal magnetism came from an 18th century doctor called Franz Mesmer. He believed that all living things possessed a magnetic force. By all living things he meant humans, animals and even vegetables. According to Mesmer, this magnetic force could induce measurable physical effects, including a capacity to heal. Mesmer's animal magnetism, also called mesmerism, became a well-established branch of medicine. And in 1784, Benjamin Franklin and his colleagues at the Academy of Sciences decided to investigate mesmerism. They concluded that there were effects, but those effects were derived from, in their words, the imagination of its subjects. Franz Mesmer was branded a charlatan, and animal magnetism was banished to the fringes of alternative medicine. But despite its high-profile fall from grace, mesmerism left its mark on modern-day veterinary practice. Go online and you'll find no shortage of animal magnets. Companies including BioFlow, Walking Mate and Magno vie for their share of the canine arthritis market. One manufacturer, Dog Streams, uses 360 degree resonance technology. According to their website, this was developed thanks to a unique scientific understanding of how each and every cell naturally interacts with magnetic fields. Cool. So how do your dog's cells naturally interact with magnetic fields? We're talking about a magnetic field positioned far from painful joints and a field which, even if it were positioned directly over a joint, we need a magnet the size of an MRI scanner to exert a measurable effect within the joint itself. Fortunately, magnet manufacturers have an alternative theory, and this theory is nothing if not elegant. Caregivers are instructed to position the magnet over the jugular vein. The jugular vein contains red blood cells. Red blood cells contain haemoglobin, and haemoglobin contains iron. So the magnet attracts the iron, causing the red blood cells to form an orderly cue. When the orderly red blood cell reaches an inflamed joint, they work their magic. Awesome. Or at least it would be awesome if the iron in haemoglobin was ferromagnetic. But alas, it isn't. Magnets exert precisely zero effect on red blood cells, or indeed any animal cell. This explains why the companies who make them produce precisely zero actual evidence to support a benefit. No evidence, that is, except five-star reviews and glowing testimonials. So, who should we believe? Is it scientists like Benjamin Franklin, or is it, to paraphrase Dogstream's website, the thousands of satisfied users, including world and Olympic champions. Now, if we're planning a science versus faith debate, we'll need very robust science. And fortunately, in this instance, we have plenty of it. It'd be very easy for a therapeutic magnet company to prove their product's effect. They'd manufacture two collars, one with genuine 360-degree resonance low-frequency spin technology and one with a fake magnet. Dogs would be randomly assigned to wear either the real collar or the sham collar. The only person who'd know which collar was which would be an impartial, independent researcher. Our caregiver would complete regular, scientifically validated pain questionnaires and our dogs would be physically assessed by an impartial veterinary specialist. This study design is fundamental to painkiller research. It's called a Blinded Randomised Controlled Trial, or RCT for short. So what happened when impartial researchers performed a randomised controlled trial comparing a true painkiller for dogs and a fake painkiller, otherwise known as a placebo? That's precisely what doctors Conzemius and Evans did in this landmark study. 58 caregivers whose dogs suffered lameness caused by arthritis administered either a powerful oral painkiller called derecoxib or an inactive placebo. 
Now, although they knew there was a 50-50 chance they'd be giving a placebo, neither the caregiver nor the attending veterinary specialist knew which group they were in. The researchers compared caregiver and veterinary reports to an unbiased outcome measure, which was force platform computer gate analysis. The results were astonishing. A caregiver placebo effect occurred 57% of the time. In other words, 57% of caregivers believed their dog had improved when computer analysis showed lameness was unchanged or worse, or they believed their dog was unchanged when computer analysis showed lameness was worse. A 57% caregiver placebo effect. How does that number make you feel? Sadly, there's a historical but unjustifiable stigma attached to the placebo effect. But there's nothing to be ashamed of. The caregivers enrolled in this study desperately wanted their dogs to feel less pain. And who wouldn't? The attending board certified specialists were no different. They wanted pain relief for their patients. After all, we veterinary surgeons are also caregivers. But despite their extensive experience, veterinary specialists offered falsely optimistic reports in over 40% of their assessments. If you're wondering if this study is a fluke, a one-off, think again. In his excellent book, Placebos for Pets, evidence-based veterinary medicine expert Dr. Brennan McKenzie summarises the work of hundreds of veterinary researchers. So why do so many animal-loving specialists dedicate so much work to this subject? Well, it certainly isn't to stigmatise caregivers or take away their hope. The reason's simple. Overlooking a caregiver placebo effect could mean our loved ones are denied the genuine painkillers they deserve. If painkillers are supported only by testimonials, we should always want to know why. And speaking of testimonials, if you learned something new today, please give this video a like, or even better, share it with a friend.